the men still kind of suck. <laughs> they're just pissing me off and they're making me angry and my blood pressure is rising. Jenny, please just turn the video off if you're watching. Like, I don't want you to see this. I don't want you to have to endure this. I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. <laughs> Look at us. Look at us. Who would have thought? <laughs> So as you can see, a mess. <laughs> so it is time for another episode of Booktube Twin Test, okay? The way the Booktube Twin Test works is I ask you guys, what booktubers do I have the most similar reading taste to? And they recommend me three books that they loved that they think I'm gonna love as well. Star ratings correlate to points, and if someone gets 15 points, which is the maximum, they're my Booktube Twin. We've already found one. Mara from Books Like War is my Booktube Twin. And I like to shake it up. I like to sometimes do this with booktubers who loads of you recommended. And I like to try out ones that one or two of you recommended. So the booktuber today is Jenny from This Story Ain't Over. Over. I am so excited. Two of you said that I have a very similar reading taste to Jenny. One person said it and then one person like seconded it. Seconded it. Seconded it. Seconded it. <laughs> so I'm counting that as two. So we're doing Butcher Twin Test with Jenny. I have watched her for a very long time. I'm gonna be honest, since before I even started my channel. And I'd never really thought of us as having similar <laughs> reading tastes. But if two of you have said it, we're gonna put it to the test. So I'm really excited to see what she picks. So shall we just go ahead and find out? Let's see what I'm gonna be reading in this vlog. Okay, I just got Jenny's video through. I'm feeling really nervous. <laughs> Clap if you have anxiety. I kind of have no idea what she's gonna have chosen. I feel, I, <laughs> I feel sick, but I can't wait any longer. I got the video through this morning and I really should be doing other stuff right now, like that I need to get done urgently, but we, we just have to watch this, guys. I'm feeling... Nervous, but also hopeful. Okay, we've got to find out. Let's go. Hey Meg, I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for asking me to do this video for you and for making me the next contestant of the twin mm -hmm. test. Mm -hmm. I have watched quite a few of your videos, but I know you like a lot of thrillers and mysteries mm -hmm. and horror. And honestly, I don't really pick up a lot of mysteries all yeah. that often. So when you initially asked me, I was kind of terrified because <laughs> this could go very badly. But I do feel like after doing my thorough research, I've found that you have quite similar tastes in certain types of books. And I think I've narrowed down a few favorites of mine that you will most likely, hopefully, really enjoy. So I know you really loved Babel by R.F. Kuang, yes. the favorite book of 2022. Yes. I know you're a big fan of the Poppy War series. Yes. I know you really loved I'm Glad My Mom Died by mm -hmm. Jeanette McCurdy. I know you have How Thunderhead you by Neil Schusterman on your favorites list on Goodreads, which gave me a lot of hope because this is also my favorite of the side series. And then I also noticed that you gave a five star rating to Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste oh, Ains, which I think speaks to the fact that you may have a similar-ish taste to me when it comes to literary fiction, mm -hmm. but who knows? Mm -hmm. So having stalked your YouTube and your Goodreads, I feel like I've gotten a pretty good sense of the books where we are pretty similar in our taste. So the first book I wanna to recommend to you is my favorite book ever, the one that I tell everybody and their mom about, and I think it's become my brand, honestly, and that oh. book is Kaigei by Vaishnavi okay. Patel. This okay. book is a really incredible, feminist retelling of the Hindu epic the Ramayana, which mm -hmm. was a story that I grew up with. And this book takes the perspective of a minor character in the epic and tells her story. In the epic, she's given sort of this evil stepmother role and is really hindering our heroes. But in this book, we start to understand her. And I think, Meg, you'll particularly enjoy like okay. the political aspects. And the fact that you really enjoyed Babel and the Poppy War as mm -hmm. some fantasies, I think you'll most likely really enjoy this one. It's got so many layers to it, so many themes, really great characters, and I hope that you love it and I'll try not to take it personally if you don't end up liking this one. <laughs> okay, so okay. the next thing that I want to recommend Good. you is one that I'm not actually I'll sure if you've read or not. I checked on your Goodreads. It said that you didn't, but I'm not quite sure because I know you've read this author's other books, so we'll see. So that book is The Southern Book Club's <gasps> Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This I is haven't... actually the only Grady Hendrix book that I have read and I absolutely loved it to <laughs> death. I love the atmosphere of this book and the thrilling nature of it and the horror aspects of it, but I also really love the concept of it just 
being like a story about mm. a mom versus Dracula. And I think it pokes at a lot of interesting social themes and issues. And I overall really enjoyed my time with it while also feeling like I got a lot out of it. Okay, and then the final book that I'm gonna recommend you is one of my all time favorites. I never stopped thinking about it. I do think this is another one that you may potentially not love as much as me, but you'll still think it's really great. So I still wanna recommend it to you. And I think based off the fact that you liked Little Fires Everywhere, you will probably enjoy this one. This one is a little bit more love story focused. So the book is The Stationery Shop by Marjan Kamali. Oh. This is a really beautiful and moving historical fiction, literary fiction, romance in slight ways. It follows two characters who were teens in Iran during the 1950s, oh. during all the political upheaval, and they are separated by different circumstances, and they are meeting again many years later in our present day, and you are trying to figure out what happened in between, and it's just a really beautiful, beautiful book. It explores not only this star-crossed lovers situation, but also the political aspect. It taps into mental health, motherhood, so many other great themes. And I overall think it's like a fantastic, brilliant book. It'll definitely make you cry. So oh get some gosh. tissues ready, especially oh for the end. But oh I love my. this one and I hope you love it too. <laughs> all that said, I really hope you enjoy all these books. Thank you so much for asking me to do this. And I'm so terrified of how this is gonna go, but hopefully it'll be okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. 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 <laughs> so, I'm so happy she picked Kaiki. I was hoping she would pick that. I've wanted to read Kaiki for so long. I put it on like book club polls. I've been trying to fit it into so many different vlogs. And I'm so happy that that's on there. And freaking Grady Hendrix. I love, I want to read all Grady Hendrix. So I'm so happy that Grady Hendrix is on there. I'm so, I, so, I can't even speak. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, today is going to be the best reading vlog ever. Southern Book Club's Guide to Save Vampires. I don't own it, but it's one of the ones from him that I've wanted to get to most. I just like Grady Hendrix. I think he's my kind of horror. And then the last one I've never heard of, The Stationery Shop. It could be because I think kind of historical literary fiction. It's something I used to read a lot when I was younger. Like I loved like The Kite Runner and, and The Mountains Echoed, for example, which is something I can think of on the top of my head. But um, I haven't heard of that one. So I think that the genre is something I don't tend to look into a lot, but I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm feeling really good vibes about this TBR. I'm kind of shook. Like, I'm, I think this could be it, guys. I'm so excited. Okay, it's time to start reading. I decided to start with The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix, because this was just calling to me. It was something about it that was saying, Megan, Megan, pick me up. <laughs> guys, I am obsessed. <laughs> I'm loving it. I cannot put it down. I am only 90 pages in. I'm already getting like five star things. By the way, this dust jacket does not want to stay on. Like if I'm not clenching it tightly, it does not want to stay on. How cute though. I'm like trying to get you to get it to focus. There's like a little like library. How cute is that? Like a library stamp? Anyways, I'm loving this. So basically all you need to know is we're following particularly one mum, Patricia. Patricia! And her friends who are members of this book club but they read like a lot of like true crime or like kind of like horror thriller books together right and obviously the title is the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires so i don't think it's a spoiler to say there's gonna be vampires <laughs> and i think we've just met the vampire but like he seems kind of nice off the get go you know he seems kind of like a nice vampire so why are we gonna kill him that's what the title suggests and he seems kind of nice act the fool girl i'm here Back to four. If you watch my channel a lot, you'll know I'm, for some inexplicable reason, obsessed with American mums. I just love them. Or just like mums in general, like suburban mums. I just associate that with America, but I suppose Big Little Lies, which I loved, is Australia? I'm pretty sure the book is set in Australia. I'm obsessed with suburban mums. I think it's such an untapped, like, share of the market. Like, even what typically those women are encouraged to read and what is marketed to the read. It's not stuff about them. It's about like the women they wish they were or whatever. I love books about them, about them. Oh, mums. Women. So this book is talking about like the mental workload that women and mothers carry. And I'm just like, yes, <laughs> yes. There's just something about the writing. I am completely hooked. Not much has happened in the first hundred pages. We've established the book club and we've met the supposed vampire. 
I know, there could be more vampires, but this guy seems like a vampire. He had to be invited in, and he don't like the sun. <laughs> Does he glisten? Is he a monster, Bella? I love the South setting, the Southern setting as well, in America. I mean, I've never been, but I think it's a very evocative setting. I think this is set in like the 90s as well, which is a fun setting. I think this is gonna be my favorite Grady Hendrix so far. I've given him a 3.5 and a four so far. I'm getting five star feelings. I just wanna read this. I don't even know what to say to you. I love Patricia as a character already. I just, I love books that have a slightly mundane life. Like she's like having to do carpool and her daughter's on the soccer team and like this and that. Like mundane life juxtaposed with like crazy shit and I feel like that's gonna happen. But I've just enjoyed meeting her and meeting the friends and like being in their setting and in their lives for a bit. I've loved it. So I've got to tell you something guys, the rest of this vlog, I'm going camping tomorrow for the first time ever with Tom's family and I'm scared. <laughs> Are you tough enough for the job? Mm, no. When you think of a camping kind of person, it's not immediately me. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been with Tom now almost seven years and I've never been camping with them and they love camping. So it's time, we're going for four nights. So I'm gonna take this and Kaike. So a big chunk of this vlog might be whilst we're camping, which I'm a little bit nervous about because I'm a little bit nervous that like, I'm not gonna wanna talk because I'll be around like strangers, like not them, but like strangers in the, in the camping field. But we're gonna do lots of walking, lots of nice walks, but I think there's also gonna be a lot of time to read. So I'm gonna take these and hopefully read a lot of them over the next couple of days. So I've just packed up everything. I probably won't read much more tonight because I need to go wash my hair and then get ready for camping tomorrow. But I think there's gonna be a lot of time for reading. So definitely gonna finish this while camping, if not a good chunk of kayaki as well. I'm very excited. I'm nervous, but I'm excited to take along with me. We'll have lots of fun B-roll. We're gonna have lots of fun, hopefully. And hopefully it won't be as daunting as I think it's gonna be. Anyways, I will see you when we're camping. I'll probably see you once we're there next. So yeah, wish me luck. And I'll see you soon, but I cannot wait. I'm gonna read this in the car on the way there tomorrow. I'm gonna read it whilst we're there. I am beyond excited to continue with this book. These women, I love women. I love mums. I love mums. I love mums. Try not to say mother challenge failed. Okay, hi, good morning. <laughs> I've come to the top of the hill, so I'm not near anyone, so I can talk to you. Um, we had our first night's sleep here, my first night camping. It was great. I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Got woken up at half six by the sheepies. There's a cow. <laughs> I don't want to move you because you've just, I've perched you correctly, but can you see there's a cow like looking straight at me? Hello, Mr. Cow. Okay, now I've got to get you situated again. I think that's fine. So yeah, I'm having a great time. We're just about to have like a fry up for breakfast and we're gonna go out for a walk. I'm having a great time. I'm also having a lot of fun reading my book while we're sitting around. I read quite a lot in the car journey yesterday and then I've just been sitting here this morning reading some. I'm up to page 250 of the Southern Book Club's Guide to Saying Vampires. I'm loving it. I think it's gonna be a five star. <laughs> Love mums. <laughs> so I don't want to spoil anything, but like, fuck men. 
fuck men. I hate men. I'm right, aren't I, Mr. Cow? Yep, we hate him. Oh, it's a bit cold. I just hate the husbands. Oh, this is set in like the 90s, so like it's not as if we're in the 50s, but like the men still kind of suck. <laughs> they're just pissing me off and they're making me angry and my blood pressure's rising. Let women live their life and men stay out of it! And a twist just happened in the book where we were kind of like building, 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 and then something like kind of put an end to it and stopped it. And I'm just, I'm intrigued to see where the story is going to go. And I want it to go in a certain way and I want us to like fucking get this vamp. <laughs> Let's get this vamp. But I don't know, I'm loving the writing. It, I think this is Grady Hendrix's best book by far that I've read so far. I really enjoyed both Horror Store and particularly Final Girl Support Group. I think he's good at writing like older women. I don't know, but then I know my best with Exorcism is teenagers, so I'm intrigued to see that as well. But yeah, I'm just really loving it. I'm loving the writing. I'm loving the storyline. I feel like it's just plotted great. I feel like the setting is very vivid and I just love mums. Like there's a lot about what it takes to be a mum or a traditional wife or not even just a traditional wife, but like I think there's still today expectations for a partner that um, a woman takes on a tradition like you can easily fall into gendered stereotypes <laughs> I don't know and that's not, that's not necessarily always a bad thing it can be a choice but it comes with certain responsibilities like I know that my mum for example is better at organising the family stuff she's like the organiser you know my dad <laughs> Love you, Dad. Peace out. And I'm more of an organiser in my relationship. So there's just certain responsibilities I think you can easily fall under. Just talking about that is really interesting. I hope the husbands get their comeuppance for them pissing me off. And I hope we go catch this vamp. Isn't that right? This cow's really bugging me out. I am on your turf, to be fair. That's fine. He looked away. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited. We're going to have some sausages, eggs. And then we're gonna go for a nice walk. I'm really excited. I'm having a great time, guys. I was so nervous about camping. The only thing I'm nervous about is washing my hair. I think I'm gonna try and wash it tomorrow morning. <laughs> but I'm a bit nervous about that because my hair takes forever to dry. And I just think it's, oh, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, I'm gonna go finish this, but I feel like Jenny might have a five star. We might have a five star to start us off. Oh my God, what if I get another book two twin? This would be a really unexpected book two twin. Like Mara, I was pretty sure I was gonna get three five stars, or at least get three good ratings. What if we had, get another one? What if I have two books, you twins? I'm getting ahead of myself. I've read one book, but I think this is definitely gonna be a five star.
So the next morning we visited the town of Bakewell, home of the Bakewell Tart. <laughs> And of course, of course, I had to make sure I visited my favorite fudge shop in the entire world. They have lots of shops over the UK, but I haven't had it in about three years because there's none near me. I genuinely believe Roni's Fudge is the best fudge to ever exist. And <laughs> I love it so much. So I picked up like three packs of that and then we explored Bakewell. And Bakewell is actually the town that Lambton is based off of in Pride and Prejudice. It's the town that Lizzie goes to with her aunt and visits there. And then I think Mr. Darcy visits them in the inn. So it was so cool walking around there and imagining that part of the novel set in this area. And actually the coolest part was apparently the Rutland Arms, which is like a pub and hotel, apparently Jane Austen actually stayed there and rewrote part of Pride and Prejudice while staying in that hotel. How cool is that? I believe that she said that Derbyshire is her favorite county as well, which is where we were, the place we were in. And I don't know, just so cool imagining Jane Austen staying at that hotel and writing part of Pride and Prejudice. It was so cool. to film again how are we doing um i've come a bit higher today because there's a guy mowing grass i'm out of breath so i just climbed a really tall hill <laughs> he's mowing grass down there so i've come up a bit higher hopefully you can hear me okay hopefully it's not too windy it is hot today it's our last day so i last spoke to you i think on tuesday i didn't speak to you yesterday because i finished this right before we went on our walk and then we went on the walk and i was so tired <laughs> i think i only really filmed the start of the walk if you saw the clips you know when like we're on the top we're in that kind of heathery bit with the rocks and stuff we then like climbed all the way down into the village you can see below and then climbed all the way back up <laughs> tired i haven't got it in me i'm exhausted i'm in shock and i am traumatized but yeah it's really hot today but yeah i finished this right before i went on the walk i didn't have time to talk to you and then i was exhausted before well, when we came back here's the thing we want to know ratings because that's going to determine how many points jenna nina's got to start off with um here's the thing i loved this i really enjoyed it i loved it i had such a great time it was amazing i've been debating whether i give it a 4.5 or a 5 and i think kind of if you're debating that and then it's a 4.5 so i loved it 
but it's not quite a five, it's a 4.5. Now that's still a great strong start. It still bodes well. It means that Jillian can't be my book two twin because she can't get full points, but we can get close. <laughs> we can get close. I loved this. My two reasons that I'm giving this a 4.5 and not a five are I feel like the other women in the book club, we have like Mary Ellen, Kitty, Grace, um, Slick. I don't know, I think that's the main four of them. They, particularly like Mary Ellen and Kitty, but also the other ones, they never really seemed like fleshed out characters to me. Like I would get them confused. I don't know who Mary Ellen was other than someone who said lines. Like I didn't, or Kitty, particularly those two. Grace and Slick, especially by the end, I have a bit of a clearer idea because they, have I guess more distinctive things happen to them by the end of the book but the other two I have no idea who they are I have no idea who they are <laughs> like they just weren't they weren't fleshed out enough I think for me to give it five stars hopefully the wind isn't that bad if it is I apologize <laughs> I mean Patricia is the main character and it's kind of more her story than like a group of women's story so I think it's not like a deal breaker for me like I don't really mind but I think it it prevents me from giving it a five star and also the ending um I didn't dislike I liked how the ending went but it wasn't quite how I pictured it to go and I think perhaps this book I mean it is like it's 400 pages I think it could have been 50 60 70 pages shorter I think there's a few moments particularly maybe throughout the latter half where I feel like we're going around in circles a little bit and like we could have just sped things up a bit and kept the pace going so I loved it I think it's great it's by far my favorite Grady Hendrix it's exactly my kind of thing this does like I always say Grady Hendrix does camp horror but this does go there with some of the like I was like grossed out like it goes there with body horror with extreme topics if you need trigger warnings I would look them up for this because like it goes there it's pretty graphic with some of the stuff that happens listen I'm a baby this is like my level of horror okay but yeah I'm excited we're gonna go for our last walk today it's our last full day today and just like being on this holiday is making me even more excited for Costa Rica which if you guys don't know is my next trip oh shit my lens cap I am so excited it's happening near the start of November start mid of November and I just can't I can't believe I'm getting to go on holiday with you guys like it actually is crazy like me and Tom were just talking about how crazy it is that I am this lucky and in this privileged a position to go on holiday with some of you so if you have been interested the um I'll put the date up there's the last the final date to book is coming up if you do want to come on Costa Rica trip I think it's I want to say like the 16th of September but I'm on holiday and my brain is like in holiday mode so I'll put the correct date up on the screen which is the last date you can book but if you don't know I'm going Costa Rica we're visiting a lot of the beaches in Costa Rica um but we're gonna see baby turtles we're gonna go canoeing we're gonna go snorkeling we're gonna go we're gonna oh guys the settings that we're in we're in like kind of the jungle we're not in the jungle jungle we're in like the jungle by the beaches jungle you know what i mean there's gonna be sloths howler monkeys near the hotels i can't even get my words out because i'm so excited so yeah there's still spots available there's nine people booked on at the moment um so there'll be 11 of us including me and tom tom's coming as well which is crazy so if you're interested i'll leave the link down below there's still time to book if you want to join us and it's honestly the nine people who have booked i've been getting to know them we've got like a group chat and i've been speaking to a lot of them individually as well like throughout the process and i cannot tell you what a lovely group it is like they are so they all seem so nice and i'm just so excited to go costa rica together like what the hell I booked my flights right before we came on this trip and I'm just so excited so if you want to join us there's still nine spots available I'll leave the link down below oh fly and like I said yeah you've got like month months and a bit to book if you want to join the more of you want to come the more the merrier I'm just so excited so oh I just choked on my own hair oh <laughs> so yeah anyways I'm gonna go we're gonna go for a walk today our last walk and it's gonna be hot so I'm gonna try and feel my zen Climbing that hill yesterday, Tom had to like push me up some of it, okay? It was a struggle. But like when you look back and said, oh my god, I just climbed all of that, that is a sense of achievement, you know? Are you guys on the sand? If you've seen the clip, all the way down, all the way back up. Kind of gagged. Anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna go start um Kai K next because that's what I brought with me and I have the audiobook. So I'm hoping that I'll read a good chunk of it today and then obviously tomorrow we're traveling home and that'll be a couple hours. So I'm just planning on reading that in the car. So I'm really excited. I don't know what to expect, but I've pretty much everyone I've heard read it has loved it. So I'm really excited. Hopefully this clip hasn't been too windy for you. It's windy here, guys. I'm in the peak district, okay? It's windy. Look at us. Look at us. Who would have thought? <laughs> what the hell am I saying? Okay, bye. <laughs>
friends, I'm back from camping. I actually had such a great time. I was really nervous because I've never been before. <laughs> not, you know, not usually I didn't think of myself as kind of girl, but they made a lot of, Tom made sure it was like, you know, I was gonna be okay. <laughs> so I had a great time. I loved the walks we were on. It was just so beautiful. I love the Peak District so much. I just think it's just such a beautiful, it's one of my favorite places I think in England. I just love it. In the car at home, yesterday, I got basically halfway through Kaiki by Vashnevi Patel. So basically what you need to know about this is that it's a retelling of the character Kaiki from the Hindu epic Ramayana. And in that, I believe she is like, there's like a author's note at the beginning. She's kind of like a evil stepmother. I don't want to like tell you if you don't know, I don't know. I mean, I know it going into it because I've read the author's notes at the beginning, but she like, I think does something to do with her stepson, right? And he is, I guess, the protagonist of that epic. And she's kind of like a side character. She is villainous. And this is kind of a feminist retelling of her role. The only thing I have to really compare this to is Greek myth retellings, I guess. It's the only kind of retellings of ancient texts that I have read. And it's similar to that in that the other ones I've read, it starts kind of at the character's childhood and we see them grow up. I guess the point of this book is for us to understand her and see that she's not a villain and see where she's come from or see her descent into villainy. I don't know, I don't really feel like that's gonna happen. And I'm not disliking it, but there's just something about it I'm not loving. Stop while you're, stop while you're ahead. If you guys have watched a lot of my videos, you know I've had issues with Greek myth retellings where I can see that the writing is beautiful, I can see the cat like the um I can see that the character development is amazing, but there's just something about a story being pre-determined going into it that doesn't work for me. And I feel like that's almost happening in this because I feel like there's certain plot beats from the original that the author, if they're like deciding to stick to it, if they're deciding to kind of stick to the plot beats has to hit. And there's a certain character development that you have to show. And sometimes I feel like that can lead to characters having, sorry, someone's who bring us. <laughs> characters having reactions or reacting to events and developing from them in a way that doesn't feel entirely realistic. Like an event will happen and that will change them in a way that they have to change for the story to move on in the way that it has to, but it doesn't feel entirely earned to me. I don't know. So that's upsetting me because I want to love this. I've heard nothing but great things. At the moment, it's probably like a 3.5. Like I'm enjoying it, but it's not entirely holding my attention. It's not entirely captivating me. The writing, there's something about the writing I'm not vibing with, but I don't know. I've predominantly listened to the audiobook for this first half, and I don't know if perhaps this writing is but would be better read just physically, but now I've started the audiobook. I, I like once I start a book with the audiobook, I can't stop. <laughs> Even if I read it physically, I'm still gonna have the audiobook now that I've started, you know? And here's the thing, I don't know the original story. Uh, similar with Greek myths, I often like, I didn't know the story of Circe before I read that. So I think it could be more impactful for me if I had grown up with that story or I knew that story and I can see this being very important and impactful for people to read. But I also feel like it's, I don't, I don't know the main story, but I, my assumption is she's kind of like this villainous character. And I feel like this is, this book is really trying to just make her like an angel. <laughs> like nothing has really happened yet. We're halfway through for her to show any signs of moral grayness. And I just feel like we need that. I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm interested in like a complete, like one, 180 like redemption arc of an originally villainous character. For me, what would be more interesting is like moral grayness, leaning towards redemption, leaning towards like understanding them. But I feel like there needs to be a little moral grayness. Like I feel like Cersei did that really well, but there was like elements of Cersei. She did some stuff where you're like, girl. <laughs> And I just don't feel like we've had that yet. Oh my God, there's noise everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna go finish this. I'm liking it. I'm not loving it. And I'm very, I'm sorry, because I wanted to love this so bad. Jenny, please just turn the video off if you're watching. Like, I don't want you to see this. I don't want you to have to endure this. I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I'm just gonna shut down and I don't want to talk about it. I finished Kaiki. Um, I'm gonna give it a three. I'm gonna give it three stars. And I know this is like your favorite book ever. <laughs> and I just, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do this to someone, okay? I don't wanna, I don't, it was a three. It was a three. So that puts Jenny on 
maths seven and a half points so far. This was just a classic case for me of A, something that happens to me a lot where if I don't vibe with the writing for whatever reason, I don't think the writing is bad, but if I just don't personally connect to the style of writing, I cannot connect to the book. That happens to me quite a lot. I feel like I'm a broken record. I say it all the time. But if the writing just doesn't work for me, it's like a barrier for me to enjoy the rest of the story in all books. And it happens quite a lot. I'm quite a picky customer. <laughs> And I was just talking about this particular writing style that didn't work for me, but that doesn't mean I think it's bad. I, like I said, I'm picky. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I can't tell you what works and what doesn't for me. Just sometimes different writing works for me and sometimes different writing doesn't. And it stops me from enjoying a book. So that was number one. I felt like I just never fully connected to the story, never fully connected to the characters, never got into it because I wasn't jamming with the writing style. And that's a pretty, you know, it happens to me pretty regularly. I feel like, I need to figure out a way of, <laughs> there's no way of finding that out before reading a book. Do you know what I mean? Other than not reading authors who knows all the writing style doesn't work for you again. And there is something about retellings of myths or epics or these kind of stories. I, I mean, like I said, my own experience has been with Greek retellings that I can never give a five star. Maybe one day something will come along, <laughs> but Circe, Song of Achilles, Silence of the Girls, ones I've read before, there's just something about the predestined nature of the storyline that just never works for me. I always feel like the book and my experience of it are a little bit constrained by the original text. You know, that's how I always feel. So I think those were the two main things holding it back. But for, this is a three star that I can understand why it's someone's five star. If you don't have that problem with retellings like I do, if you like the writing style, also if you've read the original epic, I think this could be really fun because for me, I don't, I don't know the story. And I feel like there was elements in this with how the author had twisted it that would be like, oh my God, you know, like a great reading experience if you have read the original, but I just haven't. But you know what? Like I know, I know this is Jenny, so book <laughs> but isn't that beautiful that it can be someone's favorite book and someone else cannot love it you know I love Babel some people don't love that I love Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter some people don't love that when someone says to me they didn't love Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter like I fully can't understand it and isn't that great that we can feel such passion and like love for a book and not everyone has to get it but like we get it you know and so the fact that someone else can experience that with this book I greatly admire, but I don't want to talk about it anymore because I feel bad. <laughs> I feel really bad, but it was just a three for me. I also feel like you can tell that it's a debut a little bit. So the last book of this vlog, The Stationery Shop, and I have been told, you know, I've been warned that I'm going to cry. <laughs> I'm in danger. So I saved this for last <laughs> and I'll check in with you on some of my thoughts in a bit. I'm halfway through the stationery shop. I've just sat down and my my camera has 8% left. So we're gonna talk quickly about this. I don't have a ton of thoughts anyways. We are in Iran in 1953, I believe, yes, when there's a lot of political upheaval at the time, but we're kind of following that political upheaval through the lens of a young couple who meet and fall in love. He is very pro the prime minister and it's her I don't know, it's their relationship, their romance, but also set in this time of political upheaval and how that's affecting their relationship. That's all you basically need to know. But firstly, can I just say, this book has like beyond deckled edges. I don't know how well it will show up on camera, but they are insane. <laughs> I thought I had deckled edges before, but these are deckled, deckled edges. Maybe I didn't have deckled edges before. This is like my first proper taste because wow, that's like, they're intense. <laughs> and how am I feeling about this? I'm enjoying it. I'm really loving the writing. I think the writing is very beautiful, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm not disliking it. I'm just not loving it. You know, I feel like this could be a strong four star. But for some reason I was expecting more, even though I hadn't heard of this book before this video. Something that I think it is capturing very well is young love. You know, the like, <laughs> the uh, awkwardness, but also the, 
overwhelmingness of young love. I've spoken about this before. Me and Tom met when I was 16. And so, I don't know, some of their interactions at the start of the book when they first noticed each other reminded me of the awkwardness. <laughs> <laughs> when me and Tom met and you're like trying to like figure out does the person feel this or is it just me <laughs> and it kind of reminded me of that but obviously this is set in the 1950s in different culture and so there is there's even more kind of like restriction over like what they can do like even holding hands in public is like oh you know girl you know so I don't know I feel like that was my favorite part kind of when they were meeting and you could feel that tension the book has gone in a different direction now basically the start of the book you know you meet her in present day in America married to a different man you know as an elderly woman and you know that he left her he abandoned her in some way in the in 1953 back when they first fell in love and she's gonna maybe get the opportunity to speak to him again and I don't know. I think, yes, there is an intrigue, like, oh, what happened? How has she been dealing since? But like, I've had a little sneaky flick ahead. I'm not gonna, <laughs> cause it's not split timeline. We have that bit at the beginning and then we go back in time. I don't think that is gonna happen until like the last 50 pages. I think I'm on page 150. I think the next 100 pages are just gonna be like the rest of my girl's life. And I don't know if that is necessarily I don't know if I'm invested enough in the characters for that to be interesting to me. So I don't know. I'm enjoying it. I don't know if I'm gonna cry. Cause... <laughs> okay. Cause something sad kind of just happened and I didn't, I was like stone faced. I was like, girl, Megan, have some emotions. <laughs> so I really don't know how I'm feeling about this. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the book and yeah, see what I think of it by the end. Cause I'm enjoying it. A lot of you have mentioned how much you loved this when I, I think I mentioned it in a TBR Cluedo lately. And loads of you are like, oh my God, I cried, you know? I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know how I'm feeling. <laughs> as you can see a mess <laughs> we've got to stop meeting like this i keep crying in vlogs <laughs> this is my second vlog in a row i've fucking bawled my eyes out in i don't know what to rate this book i don't know if it's a i don't think it's a, i don't know if it's a five and that's made me sob the rest of the book didn't give me five stars, you know? It could be like a four point, I'm trying to decide if it's a four or 4.5. I don't think it's a five. I don't look insane. <laughs> but I don't think the whole book was a five star for me. I think I'm gonna give it a 4.5, but I'm gonna go sleep on it when I'm less emotional. <laughs> I can't speak like this to you. Um, I can't collect my thoughts, so I'm gonna go bed and um I will speak to you in the morning my final thoughts on this and how many points we're ending up on okay bye I'll see you in the morning okay <laughs> obviously I saw you last night I was obviously in a bit of a state okay so I wanted to like collect myself before I gave you my final opinions on this book 
And I'm gonna be honest, I still, I'm not sure how to talk about this adequately to you, but um, as you can see, I cried for like the last 40, ish page of this book, maybe probably like 50 pages of this book. I'm absorbing so much, I'm an empath, I absorb it all. On stream to my patrons again, if you watch my last vlog, I sobbed on stream with my patrons. I promise I don't usually make it a habit, but <laughs> there's some like new patrons who joined at the start of August who were like, the two live shows I've been to, you've been sobbing. <laughs> I feel like this year I haven't really had books that made me cry and I feel like with this and the last book I, well, last vlog, uh, Greta James, I'm like finally crying again. I love a good cry when reading. Anyways, I've been trying to figure out what my a final rating for this is going to be because like I kind of should give it a five. <laughs> But I think it's going to be another 4.5, okay? I think it's a 4.5 because it's difficult, right? <laughs> I don't know how to describe this. Because at the midpoint, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know how I feel about this book. I don't know what I'm thinking. What's my opinion? But this isn't the kind of book that I think you really know how you feel about it until the end. It's the kind of book that like it builds throughout and every new page means so much because of the previous pages you've read and everything becomes more impactful based on what you've read before and the way that the story builds. So I don't think it's the kind of book that you can judge midway. However, it had a five star ending for me, but I don't know if that means I give it a five star overall. And there's a little bit with the ending, I'm not gonna spoil anything for you. I find this quite a difficult book to speak about without spoiling because it goes in a certain direction that I don't want you to have like any inclination going into this. But um, I'm hoping, by the way, my like, camera has no battery and I'm charging it whilst filming. I hope it's not gonna die. <laughs> there's a little bit at the ending that I just, I selfishly want more from. And I know that's not what the book is trying to do. And I know that's the, kind of the whole point of the book is that we don't get more from that ending. But like, I'm like, I've just read the whole book for that. For that. <laughs> it makes it even more painful. So yes, this book is very fucking sad. Okay, I sobbed. Painful sobs. Don't go into this looking for a happy time. This is a very emotionally <laughs> impactful book. But like, all that ending. I can't, I can't, I can't take it. I, I am, I am inarticulate. I literally can't talk to you about it. But I would very highly recommend this. I had never heard of it before this video, so I'm so glad that Jenny made me read it. But it's freaking sad. <laughs> I don't, I can't even think about it. I can't even think about it. And like, in terms of like where the story was going, I pretty I knew from an early point that this was gonna be the arc of the story. It's not about that. It's not a story that you need to like predict. It's just a story that you need to experience and go on the journey with. <sighs> Fuck, it was beautiful. But it's a 4.5, it's not quite a five. And listen, let it be known, I have a video that I really wanna do, but I can't do it until I have a certain amount of five stars this year. So like, if I wanted to make my life easier, I could have given these both five stars because it would make my life a heck of a lot easier. If I'm telling you right now, I'm not gonna spoil anything for you, but it would make my life so much easier if I'd given these five stars. But I wanna be truthful. Booktube Twin Test is a scientific experiment with strict parameters. And so I can't lie, I could have given these five. My life would be 10 times easier, but they weren't. But listen, two 4.5s is pretty good when it comes to Book 2 Twin Test. I'm very sad that I didn't love this one as much as everyone else has. I feel like everyone else has loved this and I it just didn't do it for me. But that gives Jenny, I think per, per my calculations, 12 points overall, which puts her here on the leaderboard. Pretty much like middle of the pack, which is pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, everyone has done pretty well on Book 2 Twin Test. Like, well, let's, let me not be mean, but like... <laughs> Apart from Gabby and Aaron. <laughs> So it's the game tight at the top of the pack, but no one else has come close yet to Mara's full full house, full points. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching me read these books and I hope you enjoyed this video coming camping with me, which was so much fun. I just want to tell you guys now, and I'm probably gonna be saying this for the rest of the year, I am so excited for all the videos I've got coming the rest of the year. You guys don't even know, like so many fun vlogs coming and even into next year, I've already planned some of that. I cannot wait. I want to read everything right now. I'm just in such a good reading mood and such a good video mood. Like I'm just enjoying everything so much and I feel so creatively excited. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Thank you so much for watching to the end and I will see you very soon in another one. Bye.